السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهدي إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اللهم اجعلنا ممن مات على كلمة التوحيد ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Indeed in having a tongue and the ability to speak is very important blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the last ayah I recited to you Allah is encouraging us to use the tongue in the best possible way قولوا قولا سديدا that we always speak the truth with regard to this deen and the affairs of our life. Lying even jokingly is an attribute or an attitude that is disliked in Al-Islam. As a matter of fact, plenty of the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu prohibiting lying. And there is an exception obviously. But for the most part, we should not. Why? Why should we always speak the truth? 
In the following verse, Allah answered that question. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah will amend our deeds and forgive our sins. That's what at stake. أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he gave a speech, whether it is Jum'ah or other than that, he would use this khutbah al hajjah And inshallah ta'ala, one of those Fridays, we'll go through khutbah al hajjah and why it's important. Because ever since I arrived to this community, you see me every Friday doing the same thing. And this is a deliberate reason. And the idea behind it, for you to memorize it. For you to use it in your speech. Because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used it. And I would love for our youth, for one of them to stand in here. Because it did happen in Illinois. The youth after Salat al Jum'ah will stand in here and give khutbah to al-Hajjah. And I would love to coach one of our youth to do that. Inshallah ta'ala. This is a great thing. And our youth need to learn what leadership is all about. So if you're interested, my call to our youth. If you're interested... I will coach you how to stand in here and deliver at least khutbah al hajjah And believe it or not, this will be sufficient enough for any Jum'ah. Because khutbah al Jum'ah is not, doesn't have to be a long drawn out khutbah, no. Alhamdulillah. So therefore, uh, some of the brothers, and this is a warning to all of us, I'm going to repeat it in the second khutbah again. It's been observed that some of us is still continue to be busy with our phones. While in Salatul Jum'ah, while the khutbah is going on. Dear brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, don't waste the reward of your Salatul Jum'ah. You're here, walhamdulillah. Allah allowed you to show up here today. Don't waste the reward for it. Maximize as we call the reward. Shut off these cell phones. Shut them completely off. Don't put them in even in vibrate or silence. Shut it off. Don't make it a distraction. Because after all, Jum'ah to Jum'ah, kafaratun lil Friday to Friday is a means of what? Expiation of the sins. Especially the minor sins. And we all need it, right? Alhamdulillah, don't waste that reward. Don't go out wasting that reward. And it's been observed, some of us will actually hold a f complete phone conversation. My question to you is very simple. What is it that you know in the Quran and the Sunnah that makes this action permissible? Because personally me, I don't know of any. Wallahi, I'm trying to find a way out for you, but I can't. I can't. The Prophet was very clear in this matter. The minute the Imam stands, you are in Salatul Jum'ah. Whether we are praying the two rak'at or not, it doesn't matter. The fact that I'm standing here delivering this, you are in Salatul Jum'ah. Don't. You made the effort, walhamdulillah. Allah gave you the health. Allah gave you the ability. You came here. Whatever company you're running, if you give up this half an hour to 45 minutes, I'm going to make dua for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hour, if you are sincere and you came here to worship Allah and ignored everything else, may Allah triple your wealth. May Allah give you a wealth tenfold. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? La wallaha alladhi la ilaha illahu. So my advice to you brothers, please, please, Maximize your reward for yourself. Don't pay attention to your cell phones. If you see my cell phone is in here, you know why I have it in here? Because Alhamdulillah, Allah bless me with good vision. I can't see that clock very well and the light's reflection, so I can keep it track. I keep checking on the time. That's what I keep looking for. So my advice for us, abandon your cell phones. <coughs> As for today's khutbah, Alhamdulillah, 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam warned us about a very important stage that every human being will face and the stage of the grave. And Al-Imam Ahmad in his Musnad brought us this wonderful hadith with regard to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een how they understood the statements of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and put it to practice. And this hadith really related the stage of the grave. Uh, Al-Imam, uh, Shaykh al-Albani, considered it to be hadith on Hassan, while Al-Imam Ahmad Shakir considered it to be Sahih. In this hadith, we need to get uh, to understand this hadith and how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, when they heard the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, how reacted, how did they react to it? And inshallah ta'ala will draw some lessons. حدثنا عبد الله حدثنا يحيى بن معين حدثنا هشام بن يوسف حدثنا عبد الله بن ابن بحير القاص عن هاني مولى عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه قال يعني هاني كان عثمان رضي الله عنه إذا وقف على قبر بكى حتى تبل لحيته فقيل له تذكر الجنة والنار فلا تبكي وتبكي من هذا فقال إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال القبر أول أول منازل الآخرة فإن ينجى منه فما بعده أيسر منه وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْجَى مِنْهُ فَمَا بَعْدُهُ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قال وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما رأيت منظرا قط إلا والقبر أفضع منه That's the whole hadith In this hadith Hani رضي الله عنه وارضاه from the tabi'in you can consider him from the sahaba because he was the servant of Uthman ibn Affan but some ulama consider him actually from the tabi'in he said this is what he narrated to us that when Uthman ibn Affan stands by a grave he would used to cry and shed some tears till his beard is what? is fully wet with his tears and then he would be asked, why? Why, O oh, Uthman, why do you do this? Do you remember Jannah and Hellfire? He said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ said this. Here's what the Prophet ﷺ said. The grave, when you are and I die and are buried in the grave, I want you to think and contemplate upon this and how many brothers and sisters we buried in our cemetery. And we always say we don't know who's going to be next. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best who's going to be next. Could be me at any given moment. Could be you. Just contemplate upon this. He said that the Prophet ﷺ said, the first stage of the hereafter is when a person is dropped in the grave, embedded in the grave. And he affirmed to us, what is it like in the grave? And he gave us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two things may, may happen, may take place. When the malaika visit you in the grave and question you, if Allah makes it easy for you, the rest of the stages of the hereafter will be easy for you. And there are other stages, resurrection, al-mahshar, al-hisab, al-sirat al-mustaqim, and all of that. And if your grave is not as easy, and hardship and difficulty, the rest of those stages will be also hardship. So it's very important that you and I today understand every time we stand in here and do janazah prayer and we take one of our brothers and lower him in his grave or our sisters, that we should make dua for them, right? 
And the, by the way, the cemetery, when we bury our brothers, it has its etiquettes. And not everything Muslims do today when they bury a Muslim, brother or sister, is from the Sunnah. So we have to be conscientious in the first place. But inshallah ta'ala, I'll tackle that issue some other khutbah on the etiquettes of the cemetery. But we need to understand, once we lower this brother and sister, two things are happening. Whether it's an ease or a hardship. That is just, that's the only two choices. Now the question before us, what's going to make the grave easy? What's going to make it a hardship? <coughs> well, here it is. We're alive today. We're in control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us prophets and messengers and decreed that the Quran and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the last revealed book to humanity and Muhammad is the last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we should stand tall to be from the Ummah of Muhammad. There will, need be no be, or there will not be another revelation. This is it. Walhamdulillah, we have the Quran before us. Walhamdulillah, the knowledge is widespread nowadays. Nothing is stopping you from not making your grave an easy stage for you. So the rest of the stages of hellfire or, or the day of judgment, inshallah ta'ala jannah, the day of judgment will be easy for you. So our call today for you, remember death, visit the grave. Look at what Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu arda. Look what he used to do. And did you know that Uthman ibn Affan was from what? From the ten people that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him glad tidings of what? Of Jannah. Yet he used to do that. This is how the Sahaba bought their stamp in history through righteousness, through the taqwa of Allah alladhi la ilaha illahu. They understood the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They understood what it means to be buried in the grave even before they died. Remember, Uthman ibn Affan was given the glad tiding before he died of Jannah. Yet he stands up and does this. This is what we call the ultimate belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iman. The ultimate Ihsan. So they are role models to us. And this hadith should be taught to all of our children as they go to the cemetery with us. And yes, we can make dua for our deceased brother or sister. That's why we say, Allahumma thabbithu or thabbitha inda su'al. That's why we say this. Oh Allah, make him steadfast, him or her, steadfast upon the questioning of the grave. Because that's your first stage. And if it's good, inshallah ta'ala, the rest... When Allah resurrects us again for the accountability stage and so forth and so on, it'll be good. So today, as we sit in here, we're in control. You are in full control. You can choose to obey Allah. And you can choose to disobey Allah. And please, when you disobey Allah, do not blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you're patterning yourself after who? Iblis. Be like Adam alayhi salam. When he disobeyed Allah, he repented. And alhamdulillah, in the religion of Islam, as we remember death, immediately repent to Allah. Allahumma inni astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Make that a frequent dua. It's very easy, alhamdulillah. Like we said before, there is nothing good that we need in this life and in the hereafter, except that the Prophet told us about. There is nothing bad in this life and in the hereafter, except the Prophet warned us against. So let's come together as a community and learn this deen. And know and understand that whenever it is your moment and my moment to die, 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us die upon La ilaha illallah. Because at the end of the day is what we call the squeezing of the grave. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about it. Everyone will taste it. You and I and everyone else will feel it. So don't be among those people that deny the life of the grave. It's called Al-Barzakh. Don't deny it. Don't listen to what people circulating on the internet or the social media. This is a reality. It is the actions of one of the greatest Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Uthman ibn Affan. Radiallahu anhu warda. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani bi wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu inna huwa al-ghafuru al-rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Allahumma laka alhamdu hatta tarda, wa laka alhamdu idha radhit, wa laka alhamdu ba'da al-ridha. Again, I'm going to repeat the call that I made in the first khutbah. But before I do that, if we can pull up in the front, inshallah ta'ala, our masjid is filling, filling up, inshallah ta'ala. So there are gaps in the front in here. So if we pull up, inshallah ta'ala, to allow more room to our brothers and sisters. But the call I'm going to make, it has been observed by many of our brothers and sisters during the khutbah. Some of us are busy with our cell phones to the degree that some of us are even answering the phone and holding a conversation during the khutbah. That is not permissible in Islam. It's not. I don't know why you think it's okay to do that. Wallah la ilaha illahu. I would love to give you an excuse, but I can't. Everything I know from the Quran and the Sunnah, what does not make this permissible? So please, you made it a point to come to Salatul Jum'ah. Do not, do not, do not waste the reward of Salatul Jum'ah. No phone call will be more important than يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لَلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ ماذا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى فَاسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah made the call very clear All you who believe when the call for Salat al-Jum'ah is being made do what? Fas'aw. You know what sa'i is? Roll up your sleeve, work very hard and come to Salatul Jum'ah. Everything should cease. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the and bear with those children, alhamdulillah. The pen is lifted upon them, so I'll let them run around. I'm okay with that. So don't pay attention to them. Don't say anything to them. Let them have fun, alhamdulillah. So that's why I'm ignoring the whole issue. And alhamdulillah, I'm okay with it. Alhamdulillah. Okay? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him grow to be imams of our ummah insha'Allah ta'ala. <laughs> so don't waste the effort. And know and understand that you're going to be lowered in your grave. And if Allah makes it easy for you in the grave, which is you control today. Alhamdulillah we're alive. When we came to Salat al-Jum'ah, make it count. Make everything you do for the sake of Allah count. Because at the end of the day, this life is not our life. It's not the issue. Don't make this life your end result. That's not it. Wallaha la ilaha illa hu in the grave and the hereafter. Much better than what you ever imagined. We Muslims draw strength from the Quran. We draw strength from the Prophet ﷺ and the actions of the companion. And here's an action of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu wa where are we from Uthman? Radiallahu anhu wa None of us can even come close. So some, some of the benefits of this hadith that you can actually take with you, inshallah ta'ala, and contemplate. It shows us, مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ عُثْمَانُ بْنُ عَفَّانَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَرْضَاهُ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ مِنَ اللَّهُ
Of course, there's a balance between fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, those two has to be balanced out. It shows you how the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, ajma'een, how they took the instructions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and put it to practice. It also shows us مشروعيه البكاء عند تذكر أهوال القبر والقيامة. It is permissible to tear up, yes. But we're not going to go start screaming and shouting and rolling in the mud and the dirt. No, that's not what we do. Quietly, tear up. Alhamdulillah, it's permissible. If some of the brothers in here, you know, they think I'm a man, don't cry. No, the Prophet cried, so has the Sahaba cried. So it's permissible, alhamdulillah. Especially when you remember the grave, right? And the ahwalu yawm al qiyamah. What's going to happen in the day of judgment? And also this hadith tells us أن نجاة العبد من عذاب القبر علامة أن على أن ما بعده من المنازل أيسر منه وأن عدم نجاته والعياذ بالله علامة على أن ما بعده أشد منه It's a clear sign from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that what we do in this life and then when we die what happens in the grave is a good indication and the ahadith are many by the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم telling us what happens in the grave. So my encouragement for you, walk out of here, go look at those ahadith about the grave and use them as a mechanism and a tool to help you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we need to have fear and we need to have love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always do good and don't worry about it. Always do good in this life. And let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judge you. So these are some of the lessons we learn. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten us with the knowledge of this deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the wisdom to choose what is right always that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to illuminate our grave and make it a place in which we will get the glad tidings inshallah ta'ala. So the rest of the stages of the day of judgment will be easy for all of us inshallah ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Islam and Muslims victory. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help every struggling Muslims, Muslim around the world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant victory to Islam and Muslims. And know and understand, dear brothers and sisters, that with the ibadah of Allah and being patient, victory is coming. Sooner or later it's coming. It just requires us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he intended for us from the beginning and come together and be patient with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our community and continue to grant us tremendous blessings inshallah ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children. And inshallah ta'ala as you see these two young boys running around, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them grow and all of our children to be the next waves of Muslims that will carry Islam to a new height and live and die by la ilaha illallah. And know and understand, dear brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded whatever is good and forbids whatever is evil. We just gotta understand it and apply it. In Allah Yamur bil Adi wal Ihsani wa ita idul Kurba, wa yana al Fashai wal munka wal bari, the Aidukum la alakum ta karun. اذكر الله يذكركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون. The brother is telling me to make dua. I did. I just made it in English. الحمد لله. كل مجاهدين في جميع بقاع العالم. والله في جميع بقاع العالم. نعم. الوضع في السودان تعيس. نسأل الله العافية لإخواننا في السودان. أقم الصلاة. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيم وتد استوى ثابني ثابكم الله. Speaking of du'a, alhamdulillah, we're about to pray two rakat of salatul jumu'ah. So when you're in your sujood, 
Walhamdulillah, you are the closest moment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can make dua for anyone you want, for any country you want, for any group of people. This is the moment that you are closest to Allah during sujood. So make, take that opportunity to make dua. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحانك يا الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair to Sheikh Burhan for the khutbah. Uh, quick announcement. Uh, we do not, uh, the Al Bayan and Sunday school, we are off this week and the week after. Uh, we'll resume the first week of uh, January, inshallah. Uh, please remember to donate to the masjid, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. There's a uh, Sunday school until January 